Hey guys, Brady here. And this is my top 10 worst. I'm gonna start by start out by saying this. I was gonna see Unbroken today, but uh, change of plans, so I didn't see Unbroken today. I really want to see Unbroken. I probably won't see that till maybe next weekend, so it'll probably be too late to do a top 10 best and worst movies in 2014. So, so yeah. Anyway, uh, this is my top 10 worst movies of 2014. Uh, we're going to start off with the dishonorable mentions. I don't know why I did one quotation. You have to do the other. Whatever. Um, but yeah, the dishonorable mentions. Number. Okay, we have Draft Day. The Hungover Games. Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Pompeii. And The Nut Job. Alright, so now let's get into top 10 worst movies of 2014. These are the shit bombs that came out this year. <clears throat> Number... No, no. We, we have to start from the bottom. Alright, yeah, I, I have this on Word document. I keep all... By the way, I've seen 85 movies this year. I saw 100 last year, which is why I did top 50 and top, fi top 50 worst and top 50 best. So, yeah, this year I just saw 85. I don't know how to split 85 into two parts. So, I think after this video, I'm going to do a list of movies that I've seen. All the movies I've seen this year, because I've seen 85. And I would like to know what you guys saw this year and what's... Just re just tell me your list, if any of you guys want to fucking watch this video, because I barely get any fucking views, so fuck it. Let's get on with the show. Uh, so, starting at number... Actually, no, we should start here. Never mind, why am I starting from the bottom? Fuck it. Uh, starting from number 10, right along. Uh, this was actually the second movie I saw this year. Uh, no. Arlong was actually the third movie I saw uh, this year. Um, right along, it was a decent comedy. I mean, nothing special. It was basically like The Heat, but with Kevin Hart and Ice Cube, and it was in a male cast instead of a female cast. Um, I didn't think it was as horrible as people said it was, but it it wasn't like... It wasn't like... 22 Jump Street or the interview, so there's that. Number nine, Sabotage. Once again, the movie didn't really explain itself too much. Um, yeah, I gotta say, it didn't explain itself too much. It finally explained what, what was going on in the movie at the end of the movie. Like towards the end, it's like, oh, so that's what they were trying trying to accomplish or whatever. Number eight. Yeah, on number eight, Lucy. This movie was just awful. God awful. Uh, the only good scene in this movie was probably the uh, chase scene at the end. That was probably it. That was exciting. Speaking of chase scenes... Uh, I can't promote this enough. Watch my new video, my car crash video. I I don't like promoting myself, but I need the fucking views. I get no fucking views on my channel. It's it's fucking sad. I'm I I might stop YouTube soon, in the next year or two. But I at least want to get my thoughts out of like Avengers and Dawn, Dawn of Justice. So yeah, I might I might stop YouTube in about two years if I don't get partnership t anytime soon. <sighs> 79. No, not 79. Number 7. Annabelle. I saw The Conjuring. And then I saw Annabelle the day after I saw The Conjuring. Annabelle was boring. So boring. I was so bored. I, I, I wish I watched something else. I wish I had... The 90 minutes of my life back from watching that movie. It was so, so boring. I could have watched any other horror movie that came out in October. But no, I watched Annabelle. 
I didn't even see Ouija. I wanted to see Ouija because Ouija looked good. But uh, Annabelle. No, the only the they only had like one or one or two jump scares that were actually kind of freaky. Number six, I want to say, yeah, number six, the drop. This is an independent film. This this was Tom Hardy, Naomi Rampage, and James Gandolfini. This was James Gandolfini's last film. Uh, this movie was boring. Unbelievably boring. Nothing exciting happened. Nothing. It was just Tom Hardy looking after a dog. And occasionally James Gandolfini at a bar. Yeah, James Gandolfini is a bar owner and he's Tom Hardy's cousin. And basically about, I think maybe, uh, bets. They had like a drop off thing in the bar. So that's what it was probably about. I don't know. The movie was stupid. It was just boring. God awful. There was like no redeeming qualities. I don't get what Mr. Family Guy 1 fan found so exciting about that movie. I saw it with his mom, my mom. And him. He enjoyed it out of the three out of the four of us. I don't get how. He was the youngest out of the four of us, but he enjoyed I I don't I don't know. Number eight. No, number five. I'm sorry guys. Tammy. This had Melissa McCarthy. I was excited when when I saw Miss Melissa McCarthy doing another movie. It's like, okay, Melissa McCarthy, she is so funny. I can't wait to I can't wait for this movie. By the way, how does this have a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes? And um, Identity Thief has a 19%. Identity Thief was way funnier than this movie. The Identity Thief actually had some funny moments in this movie. This movie had me laughing maybe twice while Identity 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 Thief can't say that. Probably wasn't funny in like the first five minutes. But after the five minute first five minutes, it gets funnier and funnier. The Tammy just had like two or three funny scenes within its 90 minute runtime. Or 80 minute runtime. I think it was like 90 minutes. I don't know. Who cares? Movie was was shit. Not funny at all. Number four, Into the Woods. Don't get me wrong. I there. I like some musicals. I like like I liked Les Mis Rob. I liked Grease. I like I like some of the Disney classic films. Into the Woods is just annoying. Number three, I Frankenstein. Josh thinks this is a guilty pleasure. I don't think of it as a guilty pleasure at all. I think I, I think of it as just, I think of it as just a god awful movie, like god awful. I I really really hated this movie. The gra the the special effects in this movie look like PlayStation Two graphics, and not the good kinds like the. Like, kind of PlayStation 2 graphics, like, from the early 2000s PlayStation 2 graphics. Not, like, the more recent ones, like, from, like, 2007, but just shitty PlayStation 2 graphics. Like, from, like, shitty video game companies that don't really know how to make games. That's what that, that's what this movie looked like. Number two, Paranormal Activity, the marked ones. I don't know why Mr. Family Guy 1 fan saw this movie. He didn't see the others. The others had something to do with it. Well, it's a spinoff, so he didn't really miss much. But he shouldn't have seen this movie. He obviously he's not going to see the other paranormal activity movies now. So why even why see the fifth one? If you, why skip to the fifth one if you're just going to not see the other four movies? It's like it's like me watching Godfather Part Three, saying it was crap, and I'm like you know what I'm talking. I don't care what critics say about Godfather 1 and 2. I'm not seeing the other Godfather's movies because I, I hated Godfather 3. I saw the other God, Godfather. I saw Godfather. I'm just making an example, guys, just in case. Uh, you guys didn't understand that. In number 1, The Master of All Shits. This is probably one of... This is probably probably everybody's number 1. Well, especially, well maybe Jeremy John's and a few... I haven't really watched anybody's top 10 list. I didn't really watch anyone's besides his, but 
The Legend of Hercules. You guys are probably wondering, where the where the hell is Transformers Four? It's all the way up top somewhere. Well, not up top, but somewhere. But yeah, I didn't care for Legend of Hercules at all. The movie was poorly acted, and a poor green screen effects, poor everything. Really, they had a slow mo scene for sw for like a drop of rain dripping from Hercules' head. Would you need would you need a slow for slow mo scene for uh for a thing like that? That is just bullshit. That's it.